Uh, he was very active uh, in the late 40s and, uh, uh, and 50s. He was a co-founder of Magnum Photos, which is a, an amazingly powerful photographic agency and a successful agency around the world and still has been for years and years. And uh, he's probably best known for his book, The Decisive Moment, uh, which actually wasn't a translation of what was in French, but it was, uh, it was kind of a marketing pitch that they, they made in the US as, as it turned out and when they brought it to the United States. And basically what he would do would, uh, or what he was championing at the time was to find a scene that he thought was interesting to set up and then with great patience, a little like fishing, I guess, uh, he would wait until the, the things that he thought could happen maybe took place. Uh, and so some of his photographs, which were interesting, he might have been sitting in a spot for half an hour, an hour, until he saw just the right a group of people or person coming along who was going to complete the scene. But uh, given what the restrictions were on what the cameras were at the time, et cetera, it was uh, uh, a very good way to go, to go forward. And he had some incredibly successful photographs uh, early on. And his book was very popular in the, in the United States and around the, and around the world. And he's generally, generally considered to be the father of modern street photography. Now, since that time, you know, the technology has advanced. Some people would say it hasn't advanced, it's changed in their, in their mind. Um, but uh, it's, it's much more powerful in many ways. And a lot of street photography today is not necessarily stationary where you kind of set yourself up and hope things uh, take place. Uh, cameras are much smaller. Um, doesn't cost you anything to take pictures, particularly. You don't have to, the, the setup is uh, almost non-existent compared to what, uh, what people had to do way back when. And uh, uh, so there's a lot that happens on the run uh, with artificial lighting, all kinds of things. So it's become a much broader kind of category and uh, has a very different feeling sometimes from what, uh, from what he did. Um, I have I've kind of learned under the more the digital world than the uh, than the negative darkroom uh, world, and uh, so I'm probably more from from that school. Uh, and when I really took up photography seriously, it was a, a digital world, and I elected to go in that direction. So, uh, but having said that, I very much respect. What, what he did. And I must say many of my best photographs or what I consider my best photographs have taken just have been taken just the way he would have advocated where I've spent a half an hour or an hour in a spot because I viewed it had high potential for something to happen. And uh, I've, uh, I've ended up being uh, successful in my mind anyway. Uh, getting one opportunity and sometimes several opportunities because just that, just like fishing, uh, that day they were running and lots of things came about in that particular scene that um, uh, might not have come about on another on another day. So I'll point out a few of those uh, at the time. Some are simple, some are are complex, uh, and uh, we'll kind of go from there. So with that long-winded start. Uh, the first uh, thing we're going to talk about is the Sandwich Fair from 2019. And uh, a few of you who, uh, and maybe all of you who saw the exhibition that was on in August in uh, Town Square, uh, I think half the photographs you're going to see were on display there, but then there's another, another five photographs that uh, weren't, weren't, weren't shown in, in Town Square. Uh, so with that, there. The uh, first photograph, this one was shown in, in Town Square, is basically at Sandwich Fair. You're going to see a number of animals uh, in here because that's really what a, uh, an agricultural fair was about. Uh, uh, and they still follow that in, 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 in Sandwich. And this is the 4-H uh, group uh, uh, about to exhibit uh, uh, goats. 
and uh, the judge can be seen seen to the right, maybe behind some pictures. Uh, but uh, uh, and the, the the girl here is adjusting her goat, so it'll be posed right when the ju the judge comes by. Um, I'm not going to spend uh, a lot of time talking about each one unless there's something special. But you, after we finish the ten, we can we can go back. But uh, this one was in the show. This one was also in the show. This one was not. And the juxtaposition of the two uh, the two two goats relative to the two people uh, had a lot to to do with what attracted me. This one was not in the show. This one was. Just to give a slight comment on this, uh, I saw the balloon rolling around uh, close to the cow. The cow had zero interest in the balloon bouncing around when, when I also saw the boy streaking towards the balloon to pick it up. So I was, this was a case, it was not Cartier-Bresson, the decisive moment. This was a case of react to what's going on at that, at that time. And, I was fortunate to, to see this. These horses were in the horse pool and were uh, brought by someone who obviously was staying in that and he was feeding them outside before they went into the ring. This is a bit of Cartier-Bresson. I had spent uh, some time watching this, so I, I knew ahead of time that uh, when the tractor starts up to pull that heavy sled, that uh, the front wheel frequently went up uh, and, and went backwards. So I was kind of ready when this one started and I selected this group because the, the, the gentleman in this case might've been older than their tractor. Frequently the uh, the people, it's just the opposite. The person driving the tractor is quite a bit younger than the machine. Um, but it was, uh, it was interesting. And that's very typical of front wheel goes off the ground as they get going. Here we have uh, the side, the side show and selling a blooming onion. And then this is the uh, horse pull shot down the length of the, the track when they're where they're going with uh, scenes in the background. So I, I like this one a lot. I was at the end of the track. I, I was there for probably 25 or 30 minutes taking various shots as this goes through. It's a, it's a lot. This is a lot, an event that's a lot like uh, a high jump or pole vault where they, they have uh, flights and people gradually get eliminated as they go forward and they add weight uh, as they go until they've declared a winner. So it can take quite a while to process all of it, but it's, uh, it's exciting to watch and the, uh, uh, some people who aren't used to it are concerned for the animals, but the animals are doing this in, actually in real life and in many, in many cases, certainly in the ox pool, they still use oxen out in the woods in the winter time to pull logs. And uh, it's just, uh, this, is, this is the way of life. Quite interesting. So that's, that's the first group. So uh, any, any comments or thoughts or questions? Okay. Yeah. Wayne, do you crop your photos or um, do you take what, what comes, and it doesn't um, look like you you adjust the color or anything. Well, uh, actually, that's uh, I will I will tune the photos uh, a little bit. I'm I'm not trying to do something. I'm trying to make them look as realistic or the way I saw them. Uh, so sometimes, just given the nature of the light and what have you, the camera is not nearly as good as your own eye to adapt to the circumstance. And uh, I may get a picture that's over or underexposed and I'll certainly adjust the exposure. I, I'm not doing anything that I don't believe other people would have done in the dark room uh, before. 
Uh, so it's, it's an electronic version of doing that. When it comes to cropping, um, there's a lot of debate about, about that. If I were doing a, you know, documentary work where it's important as to what the full scene is, I would not crop for fear of taking something out that you'd later, later be criticized for. And there have been many instances of that, that kind of thing. Uh, but I sometimes will shoot a picture because, and, and give it a little more space so I have room uh, to crop slightly uh, because the worst thing you can do is actually get everything you think totally tight Maybe you get jostled a little bit and you come back and next thing you know, the head is touching the ed edge of the picture and what have you. So doing some cropping that way. Uh, uh, but you, if you start cropping too much, you might as well have used a zoom lens and, and pictures start to look differently. They flatten out, they don't look the way. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to minimize cropping except uh, for kind of what I'd call tuning the edges. Uh, I do very little Photoshop work. I mainly work in Lightroom, which is a little more limited, although all of these things are more powerful now than they used to be. So they're very, very tempting. Yes, Larry? Whoops, I can't hear you, maybe. How's that? that that's good. Yeah. Uh, Wayne, uh, I want to ask about themes that you have in mind. In the Sandwich Fair, I couldn't help but notice that I was struck after watching a few of the pictures by the contrast you were drawing between the strength of the oxen and the small delicateness of the little boy and, and, uh, and his balloon. And I wondered if, in fact, you carried that kind of a uh, of a thematic reference in your head or just took whatever seemed to fit and then sorted it out later? Well, that's very, that's a very interesting question. And I haven't really uh, pondered that very much. I, that's uh, quite interesting. I will say uh, one thing, uh, I am drawing uh, pictures of children in action. <laughs> Uh, partly because it's a, it's a difficult world today for taking pictures of children, among, among other things. So uh, when I get a chance to get, to get a, a picture such as that, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a complete picture. I'm, I'm very, very intrigued with doing that. And, and I do have some Halloween photos that I, I'm going to show here as well, which is kind of Halloween uh, still in a pandemic, uh, which we'll be showing in, in a minute. Um, but uh, uh, I'm just very interested in, uh, for some years, in, in having gone to the sandwich fair before and never having seen an ox pole or anything of that sort, uh, just the incredible strength of the animals. And uh, uh, they're just very different than riding horses or other things. These, these are animals that are bred to do, to do just what they're doing, which is to deal with heavy loads and and to be able to exert an amazing amount of power in a short period of time. And uh, uh, it's, it's something, and if you get more close up to just seeing the, the muscles in their body at the moment that they start to pull that thing, it's, sort of, it's, it's remarkable. And it's not something you, you know, trying to isolate that is, that's what photography is about, is trying to isolate something that you might not see otherwise uh, and, uh, a lot, and that's, that's what I'm trying to do then. Vicki. Whoops. <laughs> I'm going to unmute it again. <clears throat> in the heyday of uh, street photography in the 60s and the 70s, it was almost exclusively urban, as I remember it. Yes. It was not about animals. And I'm wondering if we uh, need some other rubric, some other name for the kind of uh, photography you were focusing on in the fair. Well, that's, uh, you, you could, I've heard the other ones, I mean, sometimes uh, street photography is referred to as urban photography. Sometimes it's referred to as, uh, it, it can have a documentary character to yeah. it, um, uh, but it, it tends to be a little more casual than, than documentary work. 
um, and you're not necessarily interviewing a person along with it, uh, which you might be. Uh, you know, travel photography is is in many ways another form of street photography when people are are, are talking about it. Um, but I'm excluding you know doing overall landscapes uh, to a great extent. Or having said that, I do have one landscape in here, so um, I'm not not a, not beyond taking pictures that might fall in another category. <laughs> but but uh, most of what I look at today is. Uh, well, it has been urban. It's now being less urban. Uh, uh, we'll see some beach shots and what have you as, as we go forward. So I, I don't know what another category might be. I, I've heard envi environmental portraiture is sometimes uh, looked at that way, uh, but that could be a posed photograph just with a broader background to it and not necessarily what I Oh, I, I, I feel street photography for me is candid and involves, and involves people, uh, but sometimes it's not on the street, it's inside. Well, you've seen some of the, the work and art uh, shown before, so I consider that street photography, even though it's an indoor exercise. But a lot of these were essentially about the relationship between humans and animals. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, the difference between humans and animals? No, the relationship between, not just the... the yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I missed if there was a question there. No, no, I, I, okay. that's another category altogether. Uh, I mean, another. You, don't, you don't, well, you do see that in the Winograd with the monkey on the back of the, of the driver. That's, that's correct. <laughs> but it's well, a, there, not common. Yeah, there is a, a whole, uh, a whole group of photographers these days who, just as we know, who they just take horses. People are very proud of their horses. They're very proud of their animals overall. So uh, one of the more successful areas of photography after wedding photography anyway, but a place you can make a living has been taking pictures of people's pets and, and what have you. And uh, that's kind of a different, I, I really consider that a form of portraiture. They're doing portraiture of animals mm. as opposed to maybe catching them in the act when they're doing something, which I think most of the ones here were in some mode where they were acting as opposed to just by trying to pose the animal in a way to create a, create a photograph or, or a portrait of that, that animal. Okay, all right. Well, thank you for the questions and uh, summertime Waterville Valley. So here we're gonna see some things around the 4th of July. We're going to uh, also see a little bit from the New Hampshire Music Festival and what have you. But Waterville you might not think of as a great urban center, but it, uh, it has elements which uh, are, are good for street photography. <clears throat> I referred to this group as the flag family. Everybody's wearing a flag. <laughs> You'll see uh, now here in about 15 pictures, you've seen two tractors. My father was in the tractor business, so I'm naturally inclined towards that. Well, there are Vicki and Larry <laughs> at the eclipse, <laughs> right outside the Curious George Cottage. Yeah. That's a uh, a photo that's that's my landscape in here and that's uh, Barbara paddling her kayak at, in Bog Pond which is out, off exit 27 and it's a great place to go in the fall it really is a great place to go anytime but in the fall it's fantastic 
So, so I'll stop with that, Ted, and any, any questions about that, I'm happy to respond. Okay, next. Now, one criticism I had of these photographs from someone, which was quite good, was uh, uh, you'll see some things that show empty streets and what have you. And they said those could have been taken any time at three or four in the morning. How do I know, <laughs> know it's the pandemic? And that's a very good, good thing. Uh, this particular individual uh, felt that, that photographs should stand on their own and all the information you would need to interpret them should be contained in the photograph. But you get into the question whether titling something is an important part. And as time goes on, we're combining a lot more writing skills with photographic skills. And uh, uh, anyway, that's a debatable thing and, and I'm sure it can be sorted out, but you'll, I'll, I'll comment on the context that these were taken in, which, which helps. So this, this is taken on and the next several were taken on a Saturday night in March uh, at about nine o'clock uh, in the evening. And uh, it was uh, normally a Saturday at nine o'clock in Delray Beach, Florida in, in, in March is there are people everywhere. This gallery would have been open with people looking at things. And uh, you know, this could have been midnight when there wouldn't have been people in there. But here I've, I've captured Barbara not kind of wittingly putting her arms up the same way the woman was, but that was uh, to me, but there's, there's nobody there. There's a, it's a, a mannequin inside. And this is a, 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 a outer, be, outer uh, porch of a hotel near us, which is normally filled with people listening to music, frequently a flamenco guitarist. And on Saturday night would have been very busy and uh, there's nothing happening. This is the federal highway going through Delray Beach. Uh, there would have been normally at the lights, long lines of cars on a, on a Saturday night because the off, off streets have restaurants and a lot, a lot going on. And uh, at that particular moment, there was, there was nothing happening. Now this is the first day back, the first day they opened up the beaches uh, again, and it was a, a foggy day. It was actually a beautiful neutral light day. And I, I went out to see just what was gonna be happening. And uh, uh, there were not a lot of people on the beach and those that were there were quite far apart from each other. Uh, but uh, again, that could have been taken at some other time and on a, on a different time, but it was the, the first day back when the beaches were reopened. And this was a couple of days later, people were gaining confidence and re returning, uh, maybe, maybe too soon as we now know. Um, and uh, so there were more people operating on the beach. It was a different kind of day, brighter sunlight, et cetera. Uh, this particular one attracted me because it was, well, it was a normal scene, uh, but the gesture of the, the, the girl in the middle in that, in that position um, uh, kind of made the photograph for me as it, as it we had, had people milling around. And frequently, uh, uh, a, a gesture in a photo will make the photo and want you to look at it and be more involved. Wayne, when were these taken on, with respect to mask wearing? The, these were all taken in uh, March and, and, and April. Okay. Um, well, late March uh, for the ones without anybody, and these were taken in, in early April. Okay. And uh, uh, there'll be some that are a little more recent than that. Now, this particular photograph is uh, one, 
I, I'm interested in getting people to want to be in the photograph more and, and go on. So what I'm happy about this one, because it's a little more complex, is that there's a lot going on in this photograph. You've got three, three children with three parents in, in different situations. Um, you've got people in the background who are kind of isolated doing their own thing. So as you look about around this photograph, there's, you know, there's, there's something that's uh, freestanding and there's something, there's, there's a little story going on almost everywhere. And, uh, and I like the fact that the, the one lady is taking a picture with her phone of her husband and child over here and the other person intersecting so that they, they, it all kinds of comes together, but is still apart. So uh, that's what I saw the potential for this. So I was kind of hanging around pretending I wasn't taking pictures and I probably took four or five as this was, was going, going on and I was very happy with this one. Now, this is more recently at the green market uh, that they have every Saturday. And uh, the real appeal here was the, the, the lady with, uh, uh, and most of the people walking around are wearing masks uh, at this point, but the, the bright red hair was just uh, uh, stunning and, and, and attracted me. And here, color is frequently something, just as I mentioned the hair before, but frequently color attracts me. So. The, uh, the lady in the bottom left uh, and, and the color of her shirt matched uh, the sculpture of the guitar. Uh, one criticism of this photograph I received, they said, well, you really don't know what the photo, you know, the focal point is. And it turns out the focal point's really, really color, but I can understand what they're saying. So that's probably a weakness of it. But I had to frame the photo in a way I wanted the whole guitar in. If I'd cut the guitar in any in any spot, I don't think it would have would have worked, and and it may it may have uh, diminished the the figure too much. Uh, but partly that's a good a good example of how color can can appeal, and we'll see some more of those. So that's the that's that. If that prompts any. Responses. Okay. Next, we have Halloween. Uh, we actually changed our schedule a little bit to get back in time for Halloween because I had assumed that Halloween celebrations in Delray Beach would be canceled, but I've, I've uh, shot photographs at those for the last several years. And uh, through a, a friend who owns a store on the main main street, and had asked me at one point uh, four years ago if I would take some pictures of the kids. She's on the uh, a town council, not the town council, but a town council, where they're talking with the retail association, and she wanted to be able to have photographs uh, of what was what was going on. And they've always had a, a big celebration at Halloween. Uh, in, in Delray Beach and it's, it's only gotten bigger. So I, I was startled that they were doing that again. Um, but because of that, we accelerated our trip a little bit so uh, I could do that. And, and in a two hour period, I probably get a hundred pictures that are worth looking at in some sense. Uh, they may not be great art, it's all, uh, it's a little like doing high school photos as people kind of line up, except everybody's moving as it, as it goes along. And uh, some of them stand out as being uh, more interesting than others. But uh, you'll, you'll get a sense when you see these. These are all kind of the same thing. They're taken in front of one store. Uh, it's actually uh, selling a, a artistic glass pieces. Um, and uh, the lady Mavis who runs it uh, is very, uh, has been very encouraging about coming out and, and shooting this and I've really enjoyed doing it. So this is me, you'll see a hand coming in, that's Mavis on the side. This particular year she's dressed as a witch and she's uh, handing out candy with a, with a, 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 a gloved hand. But the, the, the kids are fantastic. Uh, 
uh, believe it or not, partially hidden behind part of the uh, decoration there is Barbara wearing her Halloween pajamas. <laughs> sure. I don't know. It was. Now, I said I frequently don't pose pictures, but in this particular case, these, these kids pose themselves. They saw I had the camera, and as soon as they saw the camera, they, they must be used to it from their parents. They, they gave me that, and I, that was too, too good to let go. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's, uh, that, those are the Halloween pictures. Well, yeah, um, <clears throat> you forgot to say that that's the first day that we actually saw people smiling since February. <laughs> that, well, that's true. That, that is true. It was uh, it was a it was a very nice occasion because people were very happy, and they uh, it was a very uh, uh, diverse group, and it was terrific. It was a wonderful thing going on in the street, and. Uh, uh, it was, it, I'm glad, I'm glad they did it. It was, it was very good. Okay, well now I'll go to the last, uh, the last grouping. And uh, I call the, the Art Is Us. This is a, a project I've been working on for several years and I've, I've put together one, one book's worth of photographs. Um, uh, at this stage, which has not been amplified beyond an addition of one. Uh, but uh, the, the work here is uh, all produced after that, that book was put together. So this is a, a recent crop of things that were taken in late 2019 and uh, early 2020 before we were engulfed in the, in the pandemic. So it's mainly uh, things at Art Basel in Miami and also at uh, uh, a thing they called Art, Art Palm Beach that was up, up, up north. Uh, Art Basel is not just one show. It, it actually, during uh, Art Week in Miami, there are about 48 locations exhibiting things from extremely contemporary to, uh, to old world, to photographs, to what have you. And they're, they're all over the city. So uh, some of the, not all of these were taken in the same location, but they were taken in, in Miami during that period of time. Now this one was a partial Cartier-Bresson moment <laughs> because uh, the nice thing about uh, shooting in, uh, uh, at some of these shows is you've got like their, your own little stage where there are a few customers, some salespeople, and then the art. And I had noticed that this uh, gentleman had on colors that would match the particular paintings he's looking at at the moment, but he wasn't in place. So I basically was hanging around kind of waiting till he got over to that spot. And, and uh, it, turned, it turned out to be great because uh, uh, the lady was, wanted to talk to him about those pictures. And uh, it's amazing. He, he's not exactly the right color blue, but his, his, uh, his shorts are very much the background of those photographs. And not beyond trying to make an occasional visual joke. <laughs> now, one thing I want to say about this picture, it gives you an idea. Uh, 
these are tents that they erect for the shows. Um, and this was a very large tent, as you can see by the number of people going, going away. But, but the, the roof of the tent basically creates, it's like you're inside a softbox. So there's very little shadow. It's, uh, it helps the colors and the evenness of the light. And uh, it, it really helps create an environment of bright color, people, good skin tones, and the whole thing. So it's really, it's really a, a treat to shoot, shoot photographs in there. You also see some very interesting characters. And I don't know what organization or group they represented, but they were on that scene and blending into some of the yard in behind. And again, color is frequently a trigger for my taking a picture. In this photograph, uh, the gentleman in the middle is, is the artist who did the work. And he's talking to uh, an interested person who matches uh, a lot of the uh, kind of burnt oranges that are in, in that particular painting. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. It's like they're having dueling iPhones. I, I, I don't quite know what it, <laughs> what it is, but it's, uh, uh, yeah, the offset to me was uh, fantastic. Here we have the art lazing around the, uh, uh, the booth and the people having to walk around it to get, and the lady in the back left is, uh, is the salesperson. I found this one interesting of three, three uh, female statues with the three, three ladies taking a, uh, taking a selfie in behind. And uh, I just found that quite interesting. Now this one is uh, one that I got a little lucky on, but having seen the red statue in the middle, and I did notice that the uh, the lady with her red glasses uh, was a was a fit. I didn't realize fully. Uh, uh, I, I toward, towards the end, after taking a few, I realized the, the the art on the upper left corner had red hair as well, and I adjusted the picture to include that. I, I had missed actually the, the gift I got was that the the statue on the bottom right uh, has red red pants as all so you've got red featured throughout that whole photograph and the rest are very normal kind of dull colors so for me it worked out well and and this is a Cartier Bresson picture I saw the photograph of the horse and and pictured in my mind something like you see here i said if i get lucky i uh i'm gonna wait here until someone comes by with a long a long mane of their own and see how that works and this it worked quite well <laughs> so i had another one that was uh, was okay but not quite as good not quite as good as this And then uh, this last one, the uh, physician lining up with uh, the gentleman in the bottom left and, and then the picture on the wall was, uh, was really my inspiration for, for taking that photograph. So. So that's, that's it. We're, uh, we're at the end. <laughs> Excellent. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. So um, I can see some folks with comments um, 
and you are going to have to unmute yourself and we can do our best here because in the, the gallery side that it is um it's kind of hard for me to see everybody um but i did see vicky and larry's hands go up um so <coughs> well I've, i as it happens i have seen more of these pictures of the in the fair and the art fair and i think they're pretty they're very interesting. I think one of Wayne's real strengths is catching the odd moment or the odd juxtaposition. And I, this, this may seem sort of rambling, but uh, street photography is about this, at least uh, about something about observing. Mm -hmm. And these pictures are about observing to the nth degree, actually. There was a, uh, there's a very interesting yeah. book called uh, the, uh, something of the observer, I can't remember, saying that the 19th century photography and other things changed people's visual position. And I was thinking that even with the pictures of the fair and the Halloween, that we photography has allowed us to see so many things that we have no relation to. We're not there. We're not on. We're not there at Halloween. We're not there at the at the fair, uh, at the sandwich fair, and. The photographers have brought that all back to us, and and the uh, technique of the observer said that people's people changed as observers. Well, perhaps, but we now feel entitled to observe anything, and if somebody does it more sharply than than we did, or more sharply than it was available to us, because we didn't have to be in Miami for the fair, or we didn't have to be at the at the fair, then. Uh, you get somebody like Wayne, whose eyes are sharp enough to give mm -hmm. us something we wouldn't see otherwise. Mm -hmm. And my own feeling, having seen Wayne's work earlier, is that he has really moved and developed what he's very good at. And, and uh, it's always wonderful to see an artist advancing, which I really think he has been. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very nice. Thank you, Vicki. That's very, very nice compliment. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I keep going. I, I, uh, my motivation for focusing on photography when I retired was I had, I had to be doing something that I could get better at. Mm. Mm. I wasn't going to be a better golfer or better at something else. So far I had a lot of room to go. And I still feel I do. <laughs> well, but so as far as I'm concerned, you bore out your own prediction. Mm. Larry. Hi, Wayne. Uh, this is Larry. Can you can you say a little bit about since it is street photography? Uh, tell us about permission of the subject. Oh, oh that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, that's interesting. Uh, uh, I occasionally will ask someone, but it's uh, not very often. I will ask someone if they mind if I take their picture. I will sometimes <laughs> gesture if if they clearly see me. And they they maybe have a physical look or something like that. I kind of point at the camera and I'm a little distance away, and, and frequently they don't care. Um, it's uh, it's actually easy to take a lot of pictures of people, uh, partly because of the prevalence of the cell phone and mm. and other distractions that people have of of different sorts these days. So. Frequently, and in fact, this picture that's still on the screen, um, he's off to one side, but you can actually see his cell phone is a little bit there, whether mm -hmm. he was talking on the phone or whatever. But the degree to which people are, are engrossed, it's almost, uh, I, I'm almost at the point now where I don't want to take pictures where the cell phone shows up because it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's too prevalent um, in, in some way. Uh, but it's, uh, it's easier. I, I rarely have a difficulty, not that I haven't occasionally had a difficulty. And I have had people when I've asked if I could take their photograph, I've had them say, say no, but it, that's, that's unusual. Uh, uh, and, and most people don't seem to mind. Wayne, what are the, what are the legal restrictions, if any? Well, the legal, uh, the legal things as I understand them are as long as I, uh, I'm not taking someone's image and uh, turning it to a commercial purpose. Uh, and by the way, putting showing it in an art gallery or something is not considered a commercial purpose for that. <laughs> that thing. It is. Uh, it is. 
selling someone's image to Coca-Cola to promote the sale of, or the use. If someone was drinking a Coca-Cola and I, I took their picture and they loved it and they, and they used it to sell Coca-Cola, that, so that's a no-no. Uh, and you would need a, a model release on that. Now this, what I'm stating is in the United States. There are other countries that are much, much tougher on that. Um, but generally, if someone's in a public place and you take their photograph, and are not using it for commercial purposes, you're fine. Um, uh, Vicki. Well, that, that's absolutely true. I, the history of that is that uh, way back in 1901 or two, a young woman's picture was taken on the street and uh, then was shown uh, for, uh, yes, for a flower dispenser, uh, marketing, and, and billboards were put up, and she was shown at a bar, and she was shown at a factory, and she was a very proper young lady, and she, it made her ill to think that people had seen her at a bar, for God's sakes, and she went to bed and needed a doctor, and et cetera, et cetera, and they brought suit, and there was no law, so nothing could be done about it, and in oh. 1903, the first bill on this was passed, saying... You could not make commercial use of somebody. You're 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 open to all kinds of having your picture taken if you are out in public. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's been used in an advertisement or some other commercial way, you don't have uh, the photographer doesn't have the right to do that. And um, the uh, also, if you feel that it has given you some terrible mental distress if, or it's ruined your reputation or something like that, then you may have a case. The law is not so clear about that. But generally speaking, if you're at the symphony and somebody catches you scratching your, under your arm or something, too bad, you're in public. <laughs> well, let, uh, let me just a brief, per, brief per, personal reflection. Last, last week I happened to give a talk uh, at MIT on VJ Day, on the feeling of VJ Day, and of course, naturally, I use the famous Eisenstadt picture of the kiss that you, that we all all know know and love. Now, since this was not something where I was profiting from it, uh, I was under no obligation to go to. Uh, it was Life Magazine, wasn't it? Yeah, well, yeah. I, think I was under no no obligation to go any further. <laughs> but if I had been selling that lecture. I suspect I would have had to go and get permission from life in order to use the picture. Is that right, Wayne? That's right, Larry. <laughs> Let me tell you, life is very big about its copyrights. Yeah. <laughs> Thank That's you. Right. Um, well, I have, we have two more um, comments that look like Mary Ellen and then um, Doug, I saw your hand as well. I think it's Doug. Um, I didn't have my hand up. Or if I did, it was <laughs> the purpose. Excellent. I have a quick uh, a question. Somehow, some way in the deep recesses of my mind, I think I saw a documentary once about a woman photographer. I believe she was in Chicago. I think she died and they were going through all of her stuff, all of her pictures. And apparently she did a whole bunch of street photography and she used yes. a camera that would hang down so she could look down at it and people would not see her taking the picture. That's, well, that's, that's, Vivian, that's Mayer. Vivian, Vivian Meyer. Yeah, Meyer or Mayer. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. And she, uh, she was uh, actually became famous after she had passed on because someone had bought uh, her archive or most of her archive at a street fair for next to nothing. And they subsequently found some other pictures. Uh, but as they went through the work, they were just impressed tremendously. So it became this wonderful story of a kind of an undiscovered artist. She had been a nanny for a family and she would take her, her breaks and go out and shoot, shoot photography. And uh, the camera she was using was a Roli, R-O-L-L-E-I, -L -L -E okay. which you, you looked at through the top. Yes. Right. Now, uh, I didn't say before, when, when you get into techniques in today's world, I do that as something that's equivalent to that a little bit because I, you, I can take the LCD on the, on the back mm. of the camera and turn it oh. out 
and hold it down. So most of the pictures I take, you will see me shooting straight across because I'm holding my camera low. If you put the camera up to your eye, you're much more obvious than if you're doing what I just mm -hmm. described. Mm -hmm. It was the same with, with her for the same reason. Okay. Yes. I have had several occasions in South America where I had tried to take very discreetly some pictures and where the person noticed it and came to me and I ended up having to erase a picture in front of them. <laughs> yes. Well, I understand that. I, I had that experience on a New Year's Eve not, not too long ago. Uh, my, my view is if someone does feel strongly they don't want their picture taken, I have no interest in taking their picture. And uh, if they come to me and say, I wish you hadn't taken that picture or what have you. And uh, so I, I erased some, this was two or three years ago. And uh, that was fine. It seems that in South America, people were more sensitive about it. Well, they, they tend to be in Europe. I think France, if I'm not mistaken, is much touchier about uh, uh, having pictures taken in public that you, mm. You, they, you don't have the right to take someone's picture even though they're in a public place. Well, in some of the islands and in, in Mexico, if they see you with a camera, they want money to pose for you. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. right. Well, you get that in Times Square, at least you're used to anyway. <laughs> if you take a picture of the wrong person in Times Square, you'll be asked to pay. Yeah. But also in Asia, sometimes they feel like their spirit is being taken away. Yes, and they understand. don't want that, and you have to ask. But right. um, that you think all, that's still true to do today, Ellie? Are oh yeah, I was in Myanmar and uh, Bhutan. You you don't take pictures without asking, and they usually say no. Well, but and it, and it's because you think that they think that their spirit is being taken. That was a 19th century idea in, in Asia. I, just not mm -hmm. I, I think it's the religious thing. Yeah, they. I mean, this is what I was told by the guide. Oh, so, there's yeah. Ellen. Mm -hmm. So, Mary Ellen, it, I, I'm first reminded of a story. It's so easy to make assumptions based upon limited pieces of data, like, like what you just just mentioned. I'll just relate one. I was early in the morning on the on the beach in Portugal, in uh, oh, I forgot the name the name of the name of the little little city that has the castle of Henry the Navigator. No, no, it starts with an S. Anyway, it's a really out of the way little little place, and I got there early in the morning because I wanted to take pictures of the locals raking in the seaweed from, from which they would separate the mussels, the, the mussels of clams, and it was very, it was very Portuguese. I was very pleased with that, and I fit. So I finished by, this was all film, so, so it was limited. I finished and the subject came over to me with his hand out and I thought he was looking for money. No, 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 he didn't, he pointed to the camera. I said, what, you know, what is it that you want? Well, it turned out, this is so long ago, that he had just heard about the Polaroid land camera and he wanted to see me pull out <laughs> the photograph and, uh, and, and give it to him, uh, which I did, of course. <laughs> well, some, some people who have taken pictures in other cultures, they used to carry portable battery operated printers and, ah. uh, with oh. them when they were overseas with native tribes and what have you. And uh, they would, as long as they're, uh, as long as their paper lasted, they would be printing pictures for people and they were, they were thrilled. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. that's a great idea. I, I just remember an advertisement, and I don't know what it was for, but it was a couple who were traveling in one of the Latin American countries and saw a, a man with a donkey and asked him to pose. And he did. And he thanked them, came over and took the camera and gave them the donkey. <laughs> <laughs> I love I love that commercial. That's that, was a, that was a TV, that was a TV commercial. Yeah, that was very funny. So, so Wayne, I just want to tell you that the picture with the red and the red glasses. Yeah. Um, what I really liked is she love had that. yellow sneakers on. Yeah. And <laughs> and you there was a yellow bird on the right, and then there was the yellow photo. That's I mean, right. see that? That's right. yeah. And it's like I saw that was so <laughs> subtle, and I really yeah, loved yeah. that oh, because it was. There was the yellow that was popping up too. Yeah. 
Yeah. I, I see really, the speaker now. Thank you, I really, Victoria. They kind of blended in a little bit with the floor, but there, there's there's gold over here on the side, so that's also right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. The yellow bird and the nest. Yeah, and the big big painting. Right, and the painting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm free to. I, I always freely acknowledge photographic luck. You have bad luck with photographs. Yeah. Might as well have <laughs> it, it's like golf. So yeah. <laughs> if I get something extra out of it, I'm I'm very happy. And then on the side, the red hair. You know, it's just really. Mm -hmm. fun. <clears throat> They're all fun. Uh, well, thank you so so much, Wayne, for sharing all of um, these pieces with us yeah. tonight. It's really great to see the windows. Well, thank, into... thank you for listening. I I like talking about it, so it's it's fun. And, uh, mm -hmm. I hope hope you enjoyed it, and we'll we'll see you in Waterville soon, and maybe maybe I'll take your picture. <laughs> <laughs> thank you have a good evening thank everyone thank you all right thank you. oh and next week where well, there's one more um next week um gary moke is speaking mm. about successful aging oh so, <laughs> <forward to. laughs> yeah, so. excellent we'll look forward to that too and thank you again wayne Thank you. Have a good Thanks, Wayne. Have a good evening. Bye-bye. Nice to see you. Night, Wayne. Night. <laughs>